Hi all, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we're taking a look at this Victron charger and inverter. A friend of mine acquired this and he asked me to check it out and see if it works. So that also means tearing it down. A quick rundown of the unit. It is a Victron Energy, a company from the Netherlands. It is the Atlas Compi 12 volt, 800 watt continuous power and 1500 watt source power. Now it, it consists of two parts, the charger and the inverter. So the charger part is of course for 230 volt mains in and can charge the battery bank. And the inverter part is for the 230 volt AC out, which can take energy from the battery bank. So let's just quickly flip through the manual here. We can see the picture of the unit, seems to fit this quite well. Just want to know something about the uh, specifications and how to connect the 230 volt AC. Okay, not much here, just index, index. It says here the uh, example codes of the combi. It's, if it's 12 slash 800, it's this model. And it's the only model named here in the manual. Okay, that's weird. Some output waveforms. Battery charging, short circuits. Um, it's protected against short circuits up to 2.75 amps. Then it will clamp the output voltage to zero volts. Yeah, that's nice. No fuses needed on the output. It's not protected against reverse polarity. That's pretty important. Okay, here, connections. Output voltage connections to the left, input voltage connections to the right. Yeah, inverter will be damaged if another alternating current uh, is connected to the 230 volt AC output. So let's not do that. Okay, battery connections. Seems to be on the PCB itself, as we can see some other components. Yeah, remove the lid. Take it away. Satisfy yourself. Well, that's kind of cheeky. But apparently there should be some uh, indicator from an LED that the battery is connected correct. So that will be interesting to see. Oh, diagram. That's nice. Okay, Victron Atlas can be up here. See, we can connect the batteries, engine, service batteries. Victron mains manager, which connects to the mains and the generator. Okay, so it seems that this cannot judge by itself if it has a mains or a generator connection. That makes sense. It can probably not even change over because it does not have a change over feature. So that makes this just a stupid charger and inverter. It's a combi with both in it, but it does not have the automatic changeover from losing mains and going over to generator. You need a separate mains manager unit for that. And that's all there is to it. Almost. There is of course some uh, output transformers or inductors, but other than that we can actually see the whole control circuit here. Now we have the power input board with a current sensing transformer. We have some smaller fuses over here. We have the large battery fuses over here. And we have all discrete logics sitting here. You see we even have some nice hackery wires going across some ICs here. It seems like we have an SG3526 inverter controller sitting there. And other than that it is mainly just CMOS discrete ICs. We can see from uh, the connections over here, three next to each other, that this must be TO220 IGBTs or MOSFETs. Presumably MOSFETs in a low voltage application. And check out these uh, copper bar inlays into the PCB tracks. We have that in both sides, which connects to these huge bolts that, are, that is also soldered in. Looking down the unit from the top, we can see the two heat sinks sitting out here with each their row of TO220 
MOSFETs or transistors. We can see the two large connectors down here to the choke or the charger. And we can also notice this, there's another thick copper wire going all the way around in a circle. So it seems that they made some kind of ground plane with a complete ground loop all around the discrete logics. But other than that, there is no visible capacitors down here. So the inverter and battery charger rely so solely on a zero voltage switching topology as there is no inverter part drawing current from a capacitor DC bulk bank. I connected a plug to the output, a mains connection to the input, two wires for the battery, and following the manual it says we have to unplug the four fuses here, and apparently also throw them away. Now where the, did that go? Come here. Okay. So out with the four fuses and then we can connect the battery and we should see the battery indicators light up according to the correct polarity. And there we have it, a green LED shining up nice down there. So I think we should start by unplugging the battery again, which the manual also states. Unplug the battery, insert the fuses. And then we can try to plug in the 230 volt AC input and turn on the battery charger and see what happens. So the 230 volt AC mains is connected now. Okay, it blinked on the inverter. Let's try to turn on the charger. Ah, we have to connect the battery first. And we have charger on, load on mains and equalize. So it is running its charger now. We can also hear it hum a bit. So I'm just wondering if we could try to turn on the inverter. Let's just try that. And nothing happens. Well, also the automatic, nothing happens. Hmm, we could try to turn off the charger then. Okay, something smells awfully warm. Let's just try to plug in the the heat gun here. Let's see if we can make that run. Okay. What if we turn off the 230 volt AC mains? Does it then work? Nope, low battery, okay. So I at least have to make the charger run for some more. So as it should be charging now, let's check out the charging voltage. 14.2 volt DC, that seems fair. The battery has been charging overnight, so let's uh, see if that makes a difference. A little sparking there, nice. Okay, so we have the green LED a bit more powerful today. So let's just try to turn on the inverter part and try to turn on the heat blower here. Okay, a little noisy. Okay, that's uh, clearly presenting a too high load to the inverter here. That it goes into overload and a low battery. So let's just try something else. Um, okay, maybe this saw instead. That's only uh, 400 watt. Okay, so it's still hitting overload. Maybe we sh should check the uh, battery voltage. Maybe this cell is collapsed. Let's 
Let's see what do we have here. 12.1 volt DC, that should be enough for it to work. And we can also check that during a uh, loading it. So we can see if it just drops. Okay, 10, 11 volts, that is not great. So that makes me kind of unsure if it's the battery. Or if it's the inverter. Because it does say load on inverter and it is a bit noisy. I'm a bit wor worried about that. So let's check the unloaded output voltage. Oh, 200 volt AC. That's not good. So even unloaded it should be higher than that. I think it's uh, quite clear to say that something is wrong with the inverter part. That it clearly should not indicate load on inverter when just turned on like this. No big surprises or anything that seems remotely burned or damaged. But there is a few peculiar things about this battery charger and inverter. That there only seems to be one primary side switch for the mains voltage both for the inverter output and the battery charger input. This merely seems to just be a step up or step down transformer according to which way you are operating this battery slash charger and inverter and then you have what appears to be a single triac TIC263 single switch, um, yeah, boost or buck converter here with a single inductor and a larger inductor down here. The two bridges we have over here, they are actually split in the middle. We can see the copper enforced PCB tracks here. But it is 70 amps, 60 volt MOSFETs, three on each leg, which seems to be two half bridges or one full bridge, I'm not quite sure. But it's, uh, it's a horrific uh, bridge work. You do not want this kind of extra inductance uh, in an inverter all around your logic part here. That makes no sense. I thought this was actually a ground rail. But yeah, let, let's take a closer look at that afterwards. Um, we can see the um, secondary side of the transformer is also center tapped. One of each legs goes to each the side of this uh, inverter. So with a single center tapped output down to the output or the battery connection. Next thing we can do is check out the DC, DC resistances of the magnetic components. So let's start out with the choke here. 0 0.5 ohm seems fine for such a large choke. Then we have center point on the secondary side. 0 0.3 ohm should have the same on the other one. 0 0.4 seems about right. Then we have the primary side. We can assume this is center tab as it's in the center there. But we will see. We'll just have to find somewhere where we have two even resistances. 1 ohm. And a bit less, but seems fine enough. Okay, so since we have continuity between all the wires, the wires on the primary, primary side and secondary side, we can check to the ground if we have any ground faults. Not there. And not there either. But the measuring capacitance or capacity of a multimeter is not enough. We need a high potential tester. So luckily I have one. So here I have my non-destructive insulation tester. Now it works by ejecting a low current here. And as I press here I can activate the high voltage and we can actually do a proper high pot testing of the leads. Now I connected the ground lead down here.
It has a speaker, so that's the very annoying noise you can hear. And it can basically be used to just track any kind of leakage to uh, ground. So if we just try to find ground here, we can see that it will immediately actually do spark to it. So we are looking for some kind of leakage to ground. Let's start out with the secondary side. Let me see, yes, we activate the high potential, which is set for 6 kilovolt. Then we should see no extremely high currents being drawn. As we can see, it's set for the lowest range, 1 microamp. So let's try the primary side. Okay, that looks bad right away, even without the high voltage. Let's try higher scale. See, that sounds bad. The clicking noises we can hear is actually flashovers to ground. So I think we have a defective insulation inside this transformer. Yeah, we can see it actually starts uh, sparking here as I near. So I am afraid this battery charger slash inverter is toast. So I think it's safe to say that Spending any more time on trying to fix this unit would be just be a waste of time if the transformer is really defective. So until next time, see ya!